without boring you guys and going through the rest of these and making sure that we checked all the fuses, we found two that are dead. So we're gonna focus right there on those two fuses. Let's pull up the wiring diagram. That's the next step. We need to figure out where those fuses get power from. All right, so starting inside of this underhood fuse block, and by the way, Caleb, teaching moment, when you see a dotted line around there's a- There's more to it. There's more to it, very good, son. Okay, so see engine fuse four is 15 amp right there. And then ECM throttle control fuse five, those are the two that are dead, okay? Notice that they come from pin 87 on the relay. It's gonna supply power to that fuse four and then five and then see it goes to injector b fuse 13 diagram five of six mm -hmm. so we would go to diagram five of six to see what else that relay powers i don't care here's what i know a relay powers these fuses mm -hmm. and that relay is not powering these fuses so then the question is is it a relay problem is it a supply problem to the relay or is it a relay control problem so let's talk about that now look at what it says so it says hot all the time up here and notice the control, which is where the coil is, and then the switch, which is the load, mm -hmm. share the same power feed. It's hot all the time. Before we condemn the relay as not being functional, we need to make sure that the load coming into the relay is good. Well, how do we do that? We've already done it. By checking the ECM bat fuse, number 12 over here, that's 10 amp. If you remember, we checked that and we have 14.5 volts because we have a charger on the system. So the fact that we have power on the ECM bat fuse tells us that hot all the time leg is there. Yeah, gotcha. That same feed feeds all of that. Now we could have a problem in the box, of course, but you know we're, we're not gonna go crazy on that part yet. We need to finish our test and talk about how this works. So pin 85 is your control mm -hmm. side power feed. So what does a coil of wire need to work? Power to ground, very good, Caleb. So what does pin 86 have to be if pin 85 is a power? Pin 86 has to be a ground. That's what controls this relay. So where is that ground? Let's highlight that yellow wire and let's find out where that goes. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Before we dissect the box and say, okay, let's check the relay and everything else, we need to make sure the controls are there or just have an understanding of circuit design, right? And when we say control side, just to be clear, I'm talking about the whole thing, starting from up here, yeah comes power comes down all the time through the coil yes. comes back out this is going to be a ground mm -hmm. that wouldn't be grounded all the time mm -hmm. right because that's, then yeah, then, then it would just be on all the time no this has to be a switched ground and most likely what we're going to find is that yellow wire goes to the engine computer okay, that's, what, that's what we're going to see all right so we're going to follow this and and there's the there's the next page same yellow wire what's it say pin 40 says powertrain pwtm powertrain relay control so what controls, what controls that relay? The engine computer controls that relay. Well, guess what? Our engine computer's dead. Now, what does the engine computer need to control that relay is the question. And guys, this is where our problem is on this truck. Without making you wait as to where we're going, I'm trying to recreate steps. The engine computer is not turning on this relay. That is what's wrong with it. The driver for that engine computer is not turning on. Now it could have other issues too. It's not just a bad driver and we're gonna prove that as well.